wanting to put what I say in context. Um, just heard yesterday that uh, more unmarked graves have been uh, located by a residential school, which affects my spirit. Also this morning, I learned that uh, Canada is attempting to open its doors to uh, Ukrainian refugees. So talking about who Jesus is, uh, I think always comes in context always about what we are experiencing and trying to live through. Um, so the first question was, who is Jesus to me? Uh, for those of you who I haven't met, I'm, I'm Stan McKay, and I'm living in my home village in Fisher River, First Nation. Um, and I have known through most of my life that uh, even as a child, that Jesus was, the great mystery that uh, it was about the spirit. And in that way, I think it is beyond words to really uh, express. We only know in part, and that's biblical. Uh, but I have learned that the word made flesh is what Jesus is for us. And so the love of God is incarnated love of God incarnate. In Cree, uh, Jesus is brother. He is storyteller. And I can remember, uh, I believe back in the 60s that the Division of Mission in Canada uh, sent out four line drawings depicting Jesus. I don't remember them all, but I recall very clearly laughing Jesus, which was a very, very significant new image in my limited understanding. And then there was one that has lived with me through the rest of my life. And that was Jesus as liberator. Jesus would set us free. So I'm grateful for those images, those portrayals. They were for me very radical. And uh, I think it was in a time of what is called a new curriculum in the United Church, when there was some revision happening in Christian education. So this healer, this brother, this liberator is part of what I continue to work at in my life to understand what that might mean for me as an indigenous person, and as I look at our colonial history uh, in the uh, in government and in the country, in the church, um, those images are powerful. How have I known Jesus? Hmm. I started out as a young child, baptized in a Methodist mission here in Fisher River, a church that is very much out of Methodist heritage. And in many ways, is still living out part of that, those teachings. So Jesus in our church hall was a picture of a fairly Anglo-Saxon creature on the wall. And uh, that was uh, sort of what I lived with, basically. I, my time in residential school, Presbyterian residential school, five years, um, I, I never had any reason to, to question or any support to uh, consider Jesus as anything other than um, non-Indigenous. In 1971, I arrived in the church in Norway House. Dorothy and I, with our eldest daughter, traveled to Norway House to be in ministry. I was ordained and educated in a theological school, but I had never ever put that together with my indigenous heritage or how I would ever be a minister in an indigenous community. Well, in 1971, about three months after we'd arrived, I went as I usually did to the afternoon worship at 2 p.m. in Norway House. 
a church that had begun by the Methodists uh, in 1840, uh, one of the older churches in Western Canada. And I sat in the pew uh, because the elders took the afternoon services in Cree. I did a service in English, but they were doing the Cree service. And I was learning theological Cree, spiritual Cree. I had always taught Cree, but I had never really learned my own spiritual uh, language. And, and so I was learning through all these months. And about the third month I was there, I'm sitting in the church for the afternoon service. And Fred Moore opened the Bible and he read from John's Gospel, chapter 21, verses 15 to 19. And he read the Cree Bible before he spoke. And as I sat there, I heard him say, Simon Okusa John. Simon, son of John, do you love me? Asamik in my chigusa, feed my lambs. And three times he asks, Isagina, do you love me? I remember that because I think it was the first time I realized that my culture and the gospel were connected. So um, three words, the voice of my people, I began now to see it in their lives. I worked with elders in the community and I learned from Florence from James, Nathaniel, Daniel, Jesse, Edward, Roderick, John, all these people who carried the on the work of the church in Norway House. And I was there learning, uh, being orientated to their ministry. And I began to see in them the word incarnate, the work of God being carried by these marvelous faithful people who had been colonized and left with certain images, I think that were very limiting, certainly in terms of, of how the gospel connected to our culture. So my image of Jesus was expanded. My self recognition as a person related to this Jesus of Nazareth, this family member uh, has, has been very significant in my, my journey. Seeing Jesus as, as family, seeing Jesus as liberator, and then began a period of my life that continues in my faith journey. There are many images around me that are uh, images of Jesus that are offered that are a struggle for me. Visiting two months ago with a friend who was a, a missionary for another denomination, not far from this village where I live. He was reflecting on his years of ministry and he remembers one of his early visits to the village where he worked. And so people gathered and they were in conversation and someone in the community asked, when you came to us, was it because you thought you were better than we were? And so the whole history of mission in many ways, I think uh, should begin with that question in terms of respect, in terms of humility uh, of, the, of those of us who would work in the church. So the continuing work of mission without that kind of evaluation, without the uh, history of colonization that involved the churches, the cultural genocide, what is the good news that Jesus brings uh, to a people who are captive in orthodoxy? So my, my struggles day by day here in my own community as an old person pondering life um, 
is the continued concern about the lack of humility, the lack of respect for diversity, and what would Jesus do in the context of such insensitivity. So I know I've come to realize there are many truths, many insights into the person of Jesus and what he means for us. Um, I think there needs still to be a liberation of spirit. Some confidence in faith that we carry, that there are other truths, many other truths. And so I've been for many years uh, reading liberation theology. And I have determined that my role is about the liberation of theology. That if I'm to engage with what it is to be Christian, follower of Jesus, that liberation theology can be liberated from its limitations and its comfort in terms of a certain framework. I am very, very troubled in Canada by the lack of ecumenical dialogue. I'm very concerned that those who of us who claim to be part of the body of Christ are not talking together, not collaborating, not being family. And, and I, I've spent uh, 10 years volunteering with the World Council of Churches. And in that context as well, I, I grieved for the, the brokenness of the body. Um, the many, many conflicts around theological conversation and different beliefs that we carry. So I, I live with that and I, I'm gonna close with that, that we have a challenge. In the midst of ecological crisis, in the midst, in the midst of war and rumors of wars, we, uh, we continue to operate as though uh, the status quo is, is good. I do not believe for a moment that Jesus of Nazareth would bring us to that place uh, and allow us to be so divided. So I, uh, I'm engaged with the community here with the conversations about reconciliation because I think that's work of faith. And the community here still believes in the spirit and intent of the treaties the covenant that we would share life on this land in a good way. So my friends, my sisters, my brothers, my relatives, I believe that we are led by Jesus to a place of family, of relationship with each other and with all of creation. Thanks be to God.